possibly a tire that, that didn't balance properly and it just got worse. Joey, you know that any vibration when you're in a pack like this, especially when you're a rookie, oh, there it Whoa. goes. In the middle. Oh, oh no. Austin oh, weighed no. himself upside down as the 45 of Majeski. Let's hope he gets back on his tires here. That thing's square on the roof. What a shame. Uh, time at Jeske, and his truck comes to a stop. You just know with all that movement, bouncing back and forth, side to side, trying to side in back of the. That's Fogelman in the 0-2, oh, wasn't two, it? 2 yeah, and then, man, he just, Majeski just turned sideways down the front, and it just tipped right over. NASCAR does so much work in the wind tunnel to have uh, flaps, air flaps, different panels on the truck that blow away that is supposed to prevent that, but probably just one of those circumstances that put him in a real, real in real jeopardy. Yeah, and you know, bumping through the tri-oval here is the sketchiest place to do it. Um, and you see that, that big set that you saw that white truck make right there. Um, he needed room to save it. Uh, and y you try to do everything you can to not run into the cars. You try to do everything you can to keep your truck going straight. And uh, unfortunately, wrong place at the wrong time for Ty. Nine. To the point, can he clear? Yes. Comes up right in front of Gregson. Oh, Rick. And we got trouble. That's Jeff Burton, Austin Center at the round. A lot of great cars right here. Oh, no. Big hits, too. We didn't have a big one in this race one year ago. That's inside Tina Go at Daytona. So the eight's going to push the nine. The 22 is going to catch up to the 8. 98 comes up and blocks and stacks him up right here. 22 gets in the back of the 8, knocks him down. The rest is history. Just kind of one of those stack ups. But it's a block. A block stacked him up and created that. But that block was a necessity. If the 98 of Chase Briscoe wouldn't have moved up and slowed down the momentum, he would have been passed right there. Where is the balance on that, Brad? That's a, a conversation that's been a focal point all week long. Yeah, I mean, you're going to continue to see this. And, and, you know, part of it is, you know, these cars can take pushes, but as it, it works its way back, that energy works its way back. As it did here, the eight car couldn't take a push. He was already lifting and slowing down. Then he got hit from the back. Car's already light. Instantly that's turns him around. It's just, you know, to me, that's just one of them racing deals. There are some blocks that I think... And there's a crash. Very wreck, I was telling you about. Will we keep the green out or will they throw the caution? No caution Stay yet for now. now. They're racing back. Gregson leads. Yellow is out. They're coming off a of turn four. There's the caution flag. It's over at Daytona. But here, maybe from a push, push. from behind. Big Everyone's going to push. It's the last lap. And oh, it turns them. around, yep. Very similar to what we saw on the wreck right before this with... Austin Sendrick and Jeb Burton did get a report. All the window nets are down for those drivers involved on the back straightaway. I was really surprised that the lines, you know, there was a lot of separation for the end of the race like that, yep. even coming down. And it all started from the drop of the green flag right there on the restart. They just weren't bunched up and tight the way I thought they would be. Ryan Newman off turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air, goes oh. Newman. Upside down. In a shower of sparks on his roof, Ryan oh. Newman comes across the line, fourth. And comes to rest. You see him loose oh. under him. His car on the outside got loose underneath of him, going for him. You're trying to make up time. You're out of time. Jeez, Last what lap. A hit. That is a shot right there. That car completely off the ground. And that's, you know, Mario Goslin uh, equipment, a team that doesn't have the resources and got to race again tomorrow night. Very difficult situation for them. That was a shot. Going to be able to push that Atlanta car back out front. More wrecking. And around goes the 95. Oh, and the 37. Oh, the hit. Oh, the wall. oh, my goodness. Oh, awful. Ryan Priest in the 37. Fantastic. That's Ryan talking. Glad to hear that. Put the wind in it down.
Man, that's good to see. Yeah. That was scary. That's one of those wrecks that well, you're oh, watching. Christopher Bell trying to get up in front of him. Then they make contact. Oh. Poor Ryan Priest. Mm. We talked about he's had a string of last place finishes and wow. Such a Junior and I in this booth when he was heading to that wall, we were both cringing. It's not not what you want to see, but it's good to see him get out of that car. Look at this angle of impact. So violent. 3,400 pounds of race car just thrown up into the air after it bounced off that inside wall. You see the soft wall moves as it should. The steel barrier, foam, and then concrete behind it. Look how fast he's headed in the inside wall there. No way slowing the car down. Helpless feeling. Whole suspension off the car. Look at oh. that. Oh, my Huge goodness. damage. Yeah, we thought the 11 was had the, the risk of getting stuck in the... So we'll see if Bammer has as much speed or more. Car going off. Oh, that 92's dropped the wheel. Josh Williams slamming into the sign there. Just and look at the damage. That car. But, yeah, he dropped the wheel. And he, worst part of this racetrack. Big ruts on the inside of that chicane. Took the splitter right off. Now he's lost. Trying to figure out how to get home. The brakes, that's safety. There's Josh Williams. Oh. That looked like a split that he was trying to pick up there. So the gold bowling people call. Oh, my goodness. It. Look at that. Yeah, that was a huge do that rut. Like, can we get our signage replaced, or is it it? Is it like a one-shot deal? This is probably the best advertisement they can. Drive one of your race cars. Oh, man. Holy oh, almost flipped over. Oh, so all of that debris is over there in the... See right here, he just gets in too deep. It looks oh, like... my goodness. And he was prophetic when he... Gonna get in the back of this 88. 88 tries to go to the oh. outside. And around they go. The 10 of Eric Alvaro up in the air is the 18 of Kyle Busch. Ryan Blaney is caught in it as well. Can't tell who is... Wedged up against the wall with Almarola. The 18 was airborne. It's the 88 of Bowman. All guys that are battling for the points. Who did we just talk about a minute ago that decided to go to the back? Going to ride around. He also needed right, points. Well, good job there. Clint Boyer saw this coming. Got out of it. He is going to survive this wreck. With three to go, Alex Bowman is involved. There Eric Almarola involved, and there's the 14 unscathed. So how much damage does that 18 car have? Doesn't look too bad. Up to the back of Bowman, and Bowman, this happens a little bit late, but Bowman was a little bit unsure of what to do to the inside, to the outside. He saw a little bit of a hole in the outside of the 10 car, tried to squeeze in there. The 10 of Eric tries to block it. They make contact. Here it is, the 88. Probably thinking inside, he gets a big push right there. He's not always forced to make a decision, forced to go to one side or the other because of the aggressive push from the 22. If the, if the 88 lifts and doesn't do anything, he starts. It seems like it gets calmed down, but another bit of contact. Now the 48's around into the side of the one. And the one's headed into the in outside wall at full speed. Frightening, frightening view out the front of that car. As you know, that impact's coming anywhere. Good start, and now they're four wide going into one. That's an oh, and around goes oh. the seven, hard into the outside on, wall. Buddy, hang on, the hang seven. on, hang on, hang on. On the apron, the 21 of Anthony Alfredo was into the wall hard. He's upside down, sliding through one and two. Looks like the 18 back there of Riley goes to the apron. Next thing we know, we're four wide on the apron, Jeff. Yeah, everybody's got to go. Everybody has tires trying to get track position. And Algar was just on the apron, entered the corner on the apron and ended up getting up into the side of the 21. Yeah, he ran out of, I mean, at some point, you have to make the corner. The corner has the banking. There were so many cars above him, he couldn't get up on the banking. It looked like he lost control. Take another look at it. Focus on that bright red or orange number seven back here. That's kind of where the whole thing starts. And normally you think you're going to get down here and you're going to slide up on, into the racetrack, but he just never had a chance to. 
Algar just kind of, I think, needed to give that spot up and get out of the throttle. But knowing there's a race win, if you can make it work, maybe ahead of you just chose to stay in the gas. And look at this car. It gets up on its side. It's sliding. You know, these cars have roof flaps that design them to stay on the ground when you see a high speed roll over, say, a restrictor plate track. But here, that, that wasn't really an aerodynamic thing. The cars aren't going at top speed on this restart. That's just the force of this car hitting that outside wall, throws it up into the air, and then, Jeff, as we saw, it slides to a stop on its roof. Yeah, and there was another car involved in this, too, that got him up and upside down when he did hit the wall. Take another look. Here's the 18 of Riley. Herbst, he gets into him. Both of those young drivers are having good nights tonight. And when you see a car gets upside down, Jeff, it, you know, it takes me back to the technology we don't talk about so much. You know, from a five-point to a six-point to a seven-point seatbelt harness, more, all of those points that are added are down around your hips.